Hey guys, it's Alora, and today I have for you my May wrap-up. Now, May was actually a really good reading month for me, which is kind of surprising, kind of not. The beginning of the month was crazy, it was finals week, I was finishing up my semester, and then I finished, and so I had about a week to a week and a half to just read and lounge and be happy and enjoy life, and then guess what? summer semester started. So these last few weeks have actually been pretty crazy, but I did manage to read a grand total of 10 books, which is really, really impressive for me, guys. One month, 10 books. Two of them were graphic novels, a couple of them were audiobooks, and I will share all of that with you in the next few minutes. So the first book that I read in the month of May, I actually read at the end of April and then finished on May 1st, and that book is Find the Good by Heather Lendy. Unexpected Life Lessons from a Small Town Obituary Writer. And so each of the short little anecdotes is about one person that she wrote an obituary for. In each story, there's sort of a moral to be learned from this person's life or what was important to them. Like it says on the cover, it's life lessons. And then she incorporated them into her own family and life. And I thought it was really neat. There were a couple that were really good. Overall, though, I wasn't really a fan of the format, and I didn't really like her writing style, so I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up, I listened to the audiobook version of The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. Now, this book was recommended by Peru's Project, Reagan over at Peru's Project, and she was right. It's really good. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I'm not as into long, complicated fiction, I guess I could say. This book was about a man named Harry August who is born in the very early 20th century, and he lives out his life until he's about 70 years old. He dies. And then, he's born again, the exact same day of the exact same year to the exact same parents and situation as he was the first time, and he's so confused, and this happens over and over, and so this is about the first 15 of those lives that Harry August lives, and it was really interesting. Some of them were more in-depth than others. Some of the lives kind of just flew by, and some of them were really important to the storyline. Basically, on Harry August's ninth or 10th life, he's visited by a little girl who is also a Kala Chakra, so she can live again and again too. So she visits him as a little girl and tells him that the world is ending and he needs to pass the message down through the ages, so to the next generation of Kala Chakra. It's very interesting, very complex. It doesn't necessarily follow a linear format, which makes it very confusing, but I think that overall Claire North did a great job, like I said, four out of five stars. Next up, we have Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a little while, you'll know that I absolutely adore Rainbow Rowell. She's one of my favorite authors. However, this was not my favorite of her books. I read it pretty quickly. It was a quick read, but it just didn't captivate me. I didn't really feel connected to the characters. And that's what I love about Rainbow Rowell, is that usually the characters just catch me and I don't want to let go of them. I just want to know what happens to them for the rest of their lives with her characters. But these characters I didn't really care about. It's about a man who's working in IT and his job is sort of to patrol the emails and the internet usage of the people working in this newspaper. So he has to read their emails, he has to go through their internet browsing history and see if anything's coming up that shouldn't be coming up, if they're wasting time on their work computers, etc. And in doing so, he comes across this email between these two women, and one of the women just catches his attention, and he wants to know more about her. And then he starts to fall in love with her, even though he's never met her and never talked to her in person. And I don't know, I just... I didn't like it as much. I didn't care about the characters, like I was saying, so probably about a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This next item on my list is actually a graphic novel, and that is The Wicked and the Divine. So again, if you've been watching me, you probably know I'm not generally into graphic novels. I occasionally read them, but they're not my favorite. But this one was really good. I actually gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. The illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. They're phenomenal, and I love them. I love these big ones especially. In a nutshell, it's about these gods that are born every, I think it's 90 years, and they only get to live for two years and then they die. And so it's about this girl who's really interested in these gods and her involvement with them. But again, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Then I read Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. This one took me a little while to get through, probably about a week and a half because it's so thick. It's over 500 pages long. 
and I really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. If you don't know what this story is about, which I would imagine that you probably do, it's about this girl named Emily who has a best friend named Sloane who at the beginning of summer just disappears. She and her family just no longer are in their house. She won't answer her phone. She's not replying to texts. And so Emily's really worried. And she's lonely because this is her best friend who always does things. Sloane is sort of the brave one and the adventurous one. And Emily just kind of goes along with her. And so this is a story of Emily sort of coming into her own, becoming her own person without her friend Sloane, becoming brave and learning to do things by herself. I think what I liked most about this book though was the relationship. It was sort of a slow burn relationship. It didn't just happen. They weren't just in love all of a sudden. But they really built up a friendship and then built that friendship into a relationship and I thought that that was fantastic. Plus, in accordance with Morgan Matson tradition, there is a road trip in this book. Next, we have another audiobook, and that is The Air by Kara Cass, which is the fourth book in the Selection series. I used to say the Selection trilogy, but now it's no longer a trilogy. Apparently, it's going to be five books. Going into this book, I was not expecting very much at all. I thought that I wouldn't like it because, one, the Selection books are really cheesy, even though I like them. They are really cheesy. And two, this fourth book isn't even about America, who is the main character in the first three books. It's about her daughter 20 years later. And I'm like, hold on. This is not okay with me. I do not like it when you're following a main character, you're following this protagonist, and then all of a sudden they switch it up to their progeny. It's like, no, I don't want to know about their children. I want to know about them. And so that was kind of frustrating to me. And then when I started reading it, when I first started reading it, the main character bugged me so much. She was so pretentious, she was so entitled, she was so whiny and just so arrogant and I couldn't stand her at all. However, over the course of this book, I did learn to like her a little more. She did develop a bit. She's not a perfect person at the end of the book but there is another book for her to have more character development. So in the end, I gave this one a four out of five stars. Unfortunately, this book also prompted me to go on a little bit of a Bachelorette binge on Amazon Prime. Kind of embarrassing to admit that I watched that TV show. It's, it's a, mm, yeah. Next up, we have another graphic novel and that is Rat Queens. And this is volume one, Sass and Sorcery. I hadn't heard anything good about this, but I just thought it looked fun. I like sassy characters. This is about these four girls who are the rat queens, and they are these kick-ass characters who just go around doing what they want all the time. And I didn't like it. There was so much blood in this graphic novel, and it was really dark. Just the whole, oh, <laughs> that part's light, but most of it was really dark feeling, and I didn't really enjoy that. I didn't like the characters. I didn't, I didn't like it, so I gave it a three out of five stars. The next book that I read was an ebook, and I just want to preface this by saying I gave this book a five out of five stars. It was really good, and the book is Feel the Lean by Lonnie Jane. Now, if you don't know, Lonnie Jane is an Australian model who is well known for eating a high carb, low fat, mostly raw vegan diet. And I know that sounds like, whoa, that's crazy. What are you talking about? That sounds ridiculously restrictive and completely unintuitive. But she is really, really incredibly healthy. If you do research, there are a lot of people who thrive on high carb, low fat, raw vegan diets, or even not raw vegan, but just high carb diets. And so I was really interested in this whole phenomenon, and so I picked up her ebook and I read through it, and oh my goodness, it was very, very wonderful. There were helpful tips, there were lots of recipes, the photography was outrageously beautiful. It was incredible. My dad's a photographer, so I know good photography when I see it, and her photography in this book was great. It was just a beautiful book, and I wished that it wasn't an ebook, I wished that it was a real life paper book in my hands that I could flip through and admire. But I've already read through it a couple of times. She has a lot of really good information in there and it's well backed up, well sourced, and just, I don't know, check it out. If you're interested in food and if you're interested in different ways of living in different lifestyles, this might be something that would interest you. The ninth book that I read, I oh know, man, we're getting up there in the numbers, right? The ninth book that I read 
is Fat Girl Walking, Sex, Food, Love, and Being Comfortable in Your Own Skin, Every Inch of It by Brittany Gibbons. Brittany Gibbons is an internet personality who is probably most well known for appearing on the internet in a bikini and she is a very plus sized woman, maybe not very plus sized, but she's definitely plus sized and that's her claim to fame is saying, hey look, I can wear a bikini, anyone can wear a bikini, be comfortable with yourself. Her book then is a memoir about her life of being overweight and how that's affected every part of her life and her coming to be okay with that and be okay with herself and really love herself and accept herself and I think that her message in this book is an incredibly positive one. It was really good. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars. It was funny, it was slightly crude, but it wasn't so over the top crude that it was off-putting. So nice job Brittany. And this one just came out a few days ago. This is an ARC, but, but the book was released a few days ago in hardcover. Alright, we're down to the last book that I read this month. This is probably the book that I am the most proud of having completed because it's taken me the longest to get through. Welcome to the last three months of my life, aka Air of Fire by Sarah J Mass. I want to say that this book is an absolute beast. It's so many pages long, I don't even want to count. It's just, it's too many. It's too many. I know that a lot of people really enjoyed this book, really enjoyed the training aspect of this book. It's the third book in the Throne of Glass series, and this is really a transition point for the story. I don't want to give away any spoilers, but the first two books were following the main character, Selena. She was a teenage assassin, this young woman assassin, kick-ass, amazing. She was involved in a tournament to become the king's champion. And that's the first storyline. That's the storyline of the first couple of books. This is Selena the assassin. And then the story in the third one completely changes. And I understand that this is a six book series or will be a six book series. So there's room for her to expound upon her ideas and take this storyline to the next level. But I didn't appreciate it. Honestly, I had a really hard time with the shift because I liked the story how it was. And then all of a sudden it was completely different and it was almost a completely different genre. This is now very heavily fantasy. You know, we have fae, we have wyverns, so like dragons, we have witches, and none of that was in the first couple of books. I mean, barely, barely, barely in the first couple of books. And now it's heavily fantasy. The other thing that I didn't like about this book was how many perspectives it shifted between. I, I can't even count, it was probably like seven or eight different perspectives. It was ridiculous, and so by the time you got around to reading about the person that you were reading about, you had to kind of think in your mind what last happened with them, and you weren't as interested in them anymore. And it was just, I don't know, I don't like that when stories do that. In general, I'm okay with two perspectives, but more than that, and the story just feels cluttered and ridiculously long. So like I said, it's taken me months and months to finish reading this book. Um, I would pick it up and I would read 50 pages and I would get bored and I would put it down and, and I'd pick it up and I would have forgotten everything that happened since I last read and I would only remember the main characters' names and none of the little side characters. I'd say, wait, who was that? What were they doing? How does this tie into the rest of the story? And the fact that it was multiple perspectives just exacerbated this issue for me. So I had a hard time with this, but at the end of May, I just buckled down. I said, I have to finish the end of this book. There are only 200 pages left. Alora, finish the book. And so I finished the book. And the end of the book was pleasing. I was happy with the direction that it's going now. Um, but I just had too many problems with this book. So overall, I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I still appreciate Sarah J. Mass's writing style. But I just couldn't get behind the length of this book and the perspective shifts. However, like I said, I did like the end of the book and I am planning on continuing on with the series when the next one comes out, I believe in October. Okay, there was my ridiculously long May wrap-up. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I read this month. Let me know down in the comment section what you read this month or if you've read any of these books that I recently read. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? I'm especially interested to hear your opinions and perspectives on Air of Fire because I know that my thoughts are not the popular opinion and are probably a little bit controversial. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and be sure to check out some of my more recent videos. One of them was a haul, one of them was an unhaul. I had my wrap ups for the previous months. I know I haven't been filming as much but you know, life happens. 
Anyway, definitely subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I hope to see you soon. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy. Bye, guys.